My name is Michael Amatosha. I am an industrial designer. Um, what I do basically is I design products um, for manufacture. I work full time as a design engineer as well. Design has always been a part of me. Um, it's not something I exactly knew what it was about. You know, it's always about solving problems for me, you know, picking up a new pair of headset or something or headphones and, you know, trying to replicate it for myself. Maybe I got one from the market or it was a present given to me. Then I'm thinking I want to make that as well. So that's the way I thought about things. If I can get it out there, I want to make something that's not going to cost me much. So that's the whole process for me and, you know, solving problems as well. Being able to reverse engineer a product and see how it has been manufactured and how I can replicate it and add a bit of my own finesse or whatever you want. You want to call it my own path into that product. So in school, I never knew exactly what I wanted to do as a designer. I just felt like I wanted to make something and I just wanted to draw as well, just draw things on paper and actually see it come to life. So one thing I had was passion for cars and stuff. So I did um, automotive design, but it got to a stage I just felt like, you know, I actually just want to solve every problems around me rather than just fixing cars or designing cars. I just want to fix as something as little as a pen to something as huge as a machinery you could use in a food industry or whatever industry you feel like. I just wanted to be part of that process. So I think that's what's led to to me wanting to, you know, be a designer. And it's always a thing where I, I always feel like, you know, I have solutions to many problems out there in this world. There's so many problems and I feel like design is um, a way for me personally to solve them. When I did my course at university, you know, with the way I thought about things, with my approach towards design, it was a bit in a non-conventional way. It wasn't the, the process. I just felt like if I have an idea in my brain, I could just do it. So I wasn't the guy that you'd expect to come out with our university to study design because I was very like, extroverted in terms of my ideas. I just thought, like, oh, let's make this idea, boom, let's hit. But not through the process, so I was least likely to come out well in in my course as a designer. But I kind of like managed and pulled through with it. And you know, it's quite surprising because I am still sticking to design because you've got many other students like me um, who study design, they're probably working in sales or maybe doing something that makes money quicker for them. But for me, I just felt design was my way out. That's the only thing I knew. Besides, you know, I could easily say, let's go make some money as well, but I don't think I would have taken it easy on myself if I didn't pursue what I felt was um, right here for me. So design was, uh, was a key thing for me. Subconsciously, I'd say my dad kind of played an impact. My dad um, was in the army, Nigerian army, and within the army, he fixed um, the vehicles, like the artillery vehicles and stuff, and cars as well. And he's always fixing things. And it's crazy how you can have issues in the house, like maybe the speakers is not connected or something's wrong, and you just see him just get the wires together, just put them together. You're thinking, like, how did you know that? And it just looks so natural to him. So subconsciously, I think my influence came from my dad as well. And, you know, just having that mindset to be able to can do attitude to be able to fix problems. Um, it's something that, you know, I think was passed down to me. And when it comes to like people in the industry, uh, you've got like Philip Stack, got Matt Newton as well, you've got Jenny Ive as well, definitely. Um, you've got um, so many names I could call into, but those are the people that resonate with me instantly when you talk about design these people you know from the way they 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 sort out problems and to how they fix the problems is something I admire a lot for myself so and I feel like if they can do it I can do it as well Nifty Unit Designs is basically based on um, upcoming designers like myself upcoming creatives um, will struggle to find a place in the industry this was right after I graduated from university and you know it's based on my struggles and my fellow graduates as well the same situation I noticed that we struggled to find ourselves in the industry and if we were meant to be in the industry you know 
it's good to be in the early start, like humble beginnings and stuff, but at times it never takes us to where we want to be. We have to probably do the worst of the job of nothing related to what we studied. So Nifty Unit Designs was a platform whereby people will add um, final year exhibitions, you know, get the opportunity to get themselves, um, use the platform Nifty Unit to get themselves to, to the world and show them what their talents are. You know, it's typical of everyone to say, send me your CV and your portfolio. But I feel like visual representation of who you are as a designer, as a creative, you know, is good as well. And, you know, it helps for people to understand what you stand for as a designer, as a creative, and it's, you know, instant. Uh, compared to just you know having to do portfolios and you know and um, so I've featured with um, people who um, working in great industries now and you know their work in early stages was featured in Nifty Uni and it's also a platform where you know um, pushing up pushing out young creative people as well when it comes to like kids um, youths and teenagers who don't even know they have you know creativity in their in, in them, so it's it, it's an avenue for them to showcase what they have as well as young people. And it's just creating that STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths um, process for them as well to be able to show their work. And it's true exhibition as well. And you know, they'll be able to show off that this is what I've done. This is what I've created. This is where I am going to. And you know, it's just building that confidence as well in their creative um, skills. What I'm working on, Currently is a product that helps people suffering from loss of dexterity and arthritis um, to be able to pull out the um, phone charges, the gadgets and stuff away from the wall easily. Um, the products out there, they exist, but, you know, like I said earlier, is, you know, finding better solutions to things that exist as well, you know, trying to make it better. Most of them snap and stuff. Most of them are not really, um, um, effective as you want it. So I'll give an example. This is an iPhone charger. Um, at times it's grippy. Um, you can't really get a good grip out of it. And sometimes it's hard to when you have to bend down to pull it out from the wall socket. So this was based on my experience as well. There was a time I pulled so much weight, you know, I couldn't even bend properly to pick up stuff. So, you know, I, I was like, oh, there's gotta be a solution for this. Then when I went online um, to saw what existed, reviews were like oh it snaps and stuff so i was just like boom on the spot i'm gonna create something for this so i designed a product called pluggo and basically what it does it's it helps you pull out the plug with ease and um, you don't have to struggle um pulling out the plug i'll just show you an example so this is pluggo this is how it works you take it in and you put it inside the plug that's simple and it sticks with it as well it doesn't come off and basically when you put it into the wall, you just pull out and just yank it out and that's it. So you can take it out with you, you can do whatever you want with it. You know, it just stays with your phone charger or your gadget charger. And also it glows in the dark as well for visibility, just in case, you know, you need to pull out your plugs um, and you can't see at night, then it glows, then you can see, oh, that's where my charger is or that's where the wall socket is. So it's besides the fact that it's for, it helps people um, suffering from physical impairment, um, I think as well, it helps you keep your charger long lasting as well, because most times you pull from the cable and you know, in this case, you don't have to pull from the cable, you just pull out easily. So this is what I'm currently working on. It's going to be on Kickstarter as well. At the moment, it's um, UK plugs and the plan is for, for us to be able to get it to like um, Asia and America um, and maybe Australia as well and just, you know, get a product out there. For me, it's, it's a way of life now, like compared to how I saw it before. Look back at the primitive years where you had, you know, you know, humans out there had to come up with solutions for the product problems they went through, like stones, knives, made knives from rocks and stuff, carve things out. And I feel like we're always evolving and that's the way we are. And design makes this possible for us, you know. And there's no, even if you say you're not a designer, there's some part of you that has a design element inside your, your life. So I feel like design is always going to be there and uh, different like with the introduction to IoT and, you know, um, AI and stuff like that. I feel like regardless of how many, how many robots you want to bring in or whatever, like design will still be a niche where, you know, 
it would be needed and you know fair enough you can get computers to design stuff for you but you know in your day-to-day -day life you know you wearing your shoes you're coming up with a short code to be able to get things better is your it's a process it's a design process so I feel like it's always going to be evident and it's never going to go away and for people who you know have lost faith into design from in in coming up with product or whatnot or are trying to get into it I'd say you know, if this is truly what you stand for and this is what you feel like makes you who you are, then you should go into it by all means. You know, I'm still going for my early phase as well. You know, I'm not really there yet. You know, the people I'm going to meet, they'll say, oh, what are you doing? Uh, it doesn't make sense. But I feel like you should just go at it because being a minority as well, you know, it's difficult finding people like yourself to who, who do the same thing or who could aspire you. Um, but I feel like if this is what you're being called to do, if this is what you feel like, this is what you're led by, and you should stand by by all means and, you know, make that difference and change the status quo about what the design industry represents or what it stands for. And I feel we should just, you know, push forth and just get to it. Don't let limitations or disappointment get to you. Just do what you believe in doing. Um, do what makes you happy. Do what you feel passionate about. You know, even if you don't know what it is, but just try things. And you know, as you try things as, and as you drop things, then you can identify with yourself who you truly are. And it helps you to find what you you represent and what you stand for. And for me, doing all these things make me happy. Doing, solving these problems make me who I am. And you know, this is what I'm focusing on. And if I haven't, you know, if I didn't focus myself into what I feel is right, I wouldn't be getting chosen to do new designers or, you know, regardless of how big or small you could think that is, but I feel like it's a positive step to exhibiting in London. So, um, with my product. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm just a proof that, you know, if you want to do something, even if you feel like it's not good enough, you know, some other people might see the good in your work and, you know, approach you. Have faith in yourself, in what you stand for. And, you know, for me, I stand for believing in yourself and believing in God. Like, God's definitely going to see you through whatever you put your hands upon, whatever it sets you on, like it would definitely, you know, set you apart. It sets you apart from the rest of the world. You're called to be, you know, a sheep. So if you feel like this is what God's telling you to do, do it. And sometimes people don't know what God's telling them to do. It's difficult, but is you doing the things that are right and you feel like this is it, that would help you find that path. But you can't just sit there and just wait for the right idea to come straight to you and you say this is it you just have to keep trying and keep doing things and then keep pushing forward and keep having that faith that yeah you're gonna get there so and i think that's what's working for me you know being able to say oh i'm gonna work as a freelance designer or i'm gonna quit my job uh that that you know i've got family to feed and provide for but instead i'm still trusting that you know this is gonna get me out i'm not depending on plug or whatever but i just have the faith that I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna be known for my greatness in design or whatever it is, and also my greatness in God, most importantly. Having faith in God and having faith in what you do is a big, big thing to to, to work on and a discipline to, to believe in those things is, you know, because sometimes you have doubt, but, you know, have that faith and yeah, they'll definitely put you through, man. Even if you've got the naysayers and stuff, just, just be like, God's got me, man, I can do this. I've got this. And yeah, that's what I'd say, just do it.